Okay, so today we're going to look at how to get a file from Rhino, which I'm in right now, uh, and export it to be used in Prusa Slicer, which is the program we use in uh, interfacing with our 3D printers, or one of them. So we'll use a simple, what could be called a calibration cube uh, to create our first file. So as you can see, it's got different kind of directional markers uh, on all sides that kind of let us really know which way it's oriented uh, once we get into the program, into the slicer program. So the first thing we'll have to do in Rhino is check our units, which can be seen down here. So right now we're in inches and we have to translate everything over to millimeters. And to do that, pretty simply, we can go to File and Properties. And Units. So We've got two options under units. You've got model and layout. The most important one is model. So we would change that to millimeters and say OK. And right now it says model units change from inch to millimeter, scale model by 25.4. And yes, we want to do that. I modeled this in inches, so I want it to scale up to millimeters. So seemingly disappeared. If we just zoom out, it just looks like it got really big. Um, but in fact, it is the same scale, uh, different units. I should say it'll it'll measure the same. Um, if we dimension it, this is a one inch by one inch cube. So 25.4 millimeters is one inch. Okay. So to get this to export as the right file type so that the slicer can read it, we need to select our object that we want to export. And go to File, Export Selected. And I've got lot of files here so we'll just dump it on the desktop give it a new folder we'll call this here's a test and cube okay so the file type we're looking for is called STL so just scroll down so there we are so there's your .stl file type. So you'll click on that and say save. And so this is the maximum distance between the original surface or solid and the polygon mesh created by the STL file. So this is basically a dialog box that's letting you control the um, density of your mesh that you're exporting. So the higher this number, the less exact your model will be. Um, the lower this number, the more exact it will be. So I found, you know, depending on how complicated your model is, this, this number could go up or down. Um, but let's say we just want it at you know, 0.5 millimeters for now. We'll see how that looks. Since we don't have any rounded surfaces, uh, it should probably be pretty good. So we'll say OK. And you want this to be binary. We'll say OK. So now we can go to Open Prusa and its icon uh, looks like this, produce a slicer. So you just double click that. And you should get something that looks sort of like this. Um, right now I currently have a multi-material printer selected, but 
I want to make sure, so this is my printer selection right now, and this controls a lot of the presets that get loaded. So you'll either be using a MK3, MK3S, or an MK3S with MMU2S, or an MK3S with MMU2S single. So we won't really talk about these two today, but you'll want either one of these two, typically. So we'll select that. And you can see I've got the build plate ready to load up our model. So we'll give you a file. And you want to do an import, import STL, select that. And we will navigate to our desktop and our test cube. Okay, so there it is, imported well. Um, so our build plate, you can see the y-axis is going this way, x-axis is this way, and of course the axis up and down. Um, now to process the correct settings for our material, we need to first select our quality settings here. And typically, you know, if I'm printing something like this, um, I'll usually go with 0.2 quality. So that's 0.2 millimeter layers. So that defines how thick of a layer of plastic it puts down for every subsequent layer. And I want to look at my filament. So I've got Prusament PLA selected right now. And if you don't know what type of filament uh, you'll be working with. Typically PLA is a safe bet um, to use. Uh, we typically will print with either PLA or PETG. Um, so we can you know, generally select generic PLA and get a pretty good print with that. <laughs> Unless you're using PETG, then you'd select generic PETG. All right, so this just loads up some presets for us. And there's our printer. Uh, we'll go over supports in another video. And our infill for something like this, uh, we're gonna bring that down to about 10%. So that will, we'll talk about that in a minute, but that will basically be the inside of this cube. It's not gonna be solid. And once we've got all of our settings right, we're gonna click Slice Now. And very quickly, it was able to cut that cube up pretty easily. And you can see on the left here, it gives me a breakdown and this uh, kind of color key to tell me what is uh, what part of the print it is. And you can use this guy here to kind of scrub through the layers so we can see kind of it building in reverse right now, all the way down to the bottom layers, like so. <clears throat> so even though this has like a floating layer above the Z, like so, right? So that's it bridging is what it's called. So that's a short enough distance that that material can have a complete overhang as it touches on both sides of this uh, and that's called bridging. And we'll be able to come back up all the way there. And as you can see on the inside, that's our 10% infill. And that is a uh, gyroid infill. So if I were to <laughs> select this cube, um, can click on infill and it gives me sorry there we go so click on that over this way and click on infill and that'll give you the infill modifier so if you click on the modifier it lets me control the density of that object 
and the fill pattern of that object. So you have a lot of different choices. Uh, generally these don't get seen, uh, but there are interesting things that can be done with them. Uh, gyroid is a pretty uh, standard infill and it's fun to watch print. Um, one that might print slightly quicker is rectilinear. So if I slice that, 57 minutes versus 57 minutes. So really no change at all. Uh, sometimes it does matter depending on what infill you get. It can add, um, it can add some time. So that's really about it as far as importing and slicing your model in Prusa. Uh, now if we had to orient this a different way, and we'll go over that in, in the next video with a little bit com more complicated object, uh, but you do have a lot of tools over here. So if I need to move, I can grab this and move it around. Um, on the build plate, uh, you can scale, you can rotate, you can place on face. So this allows you to kind of flip it around on various faces if you need to. Um, and cut, so you can actually cut your object in this software as well. So I would, uh, you know, encourage you to import a model and play around with these various settings and things like that. Try slicing things um, just to kind of get used to utilizing this software. It's free. Uh, it'll run on, any, I believe, just about anything, Windows, Mac, um, Ubuntu on Linux. So you've got a lot of, a lot of choices. Uh, so once you're done, so say we're done slicing this guy and you were going to send your file to me what I need from you is for you to do a file save project as and we'll just say it's a cube dot 3mf so you want it to say 3mf so that allows me to open this file back up into Prusa Slicer with all of the settings that you want uh, before I send it to the printer. Just click save and then we should be able to open project. That should load. Slice it, and yeah, so I still have my 10% infill, my generic PLA, everything's there. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.